Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if your marriage feels completely hopeless right now. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about how to fall back in love with your husband. My guest, Julie, wanted her husband to change, and he just wasn't. Their connection was very strained. But then Julie started experimenting with the six intimacy skills, and today her marriage is just what she wanted all along, a peaceful, fun, and strong union. All that's coming up, but first, let's get to how to fall back in love with your husband. But first, my disclaimer. Here's my disclaimer, because I'm thinking about a coach who recently shared with me that she decided to train to become a coach, even though she did not love her husband and she didn't really want to start loving her husband again. Uh, She was never going to divorce him. Um, But she believed that she never would fall in love with him again. Uh, So she was just taking relationship coach training because she did want to be more kind to her husband. And she thought that that would help. Uh, That was her goal, not to fall back in love. And she was actually kind of guarded against that idea. And then she spent a year becoming an expert on the six intimacy skills and practicing them at the highest level with her classmates and all the coaches. And she surprised herself and she did start to notice what a great man she had married decades ago. And she came to a coach's call recently to admit that despite her best efforts to just leave him out of this, she was in love with her husband again. So like the pirate says at the beginning of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland, you be fairly warned, says I. If you don't want to fall back in love with your husband, do not, I repeat, do not practice the six intimacy skills with a supportive community and structure, or you'll end up feeling excited and happy to be with your husband again. Okay. That's what's going to happen. You'll end up with a romance instead of a roommate and a co-parent. He'll seem sexy to you again. I know it's crazy. I know. But let's talk about how that happens and why that happens, especially if you're kind of repulsed by your husband right now, right? Or if you're just bored or maybe you're feeling so rejected or so hurt by him right now uh, that it's just hard to imagine. It might seem impossible. And maybe you're thinking, well, I just don't know your husband, which is probably true. You know, I probably don't know your husband unless he's one of the few husbands I've interviewed on this podcast during the man panels series that we do. Uh, And even then I know those husbands only a very little bit, but here's what I know about my own experience. You know, my husband, he is not like me. And the things that make me feel loved and in love are not the same as the things that make him feel loved and in love. They're completely different, actually. They're maybe the opposite, but they go together so well, like peanut butter and honey. So Let's talk about the three ways that you could begin to fall back in love with your husband again so that you're like peanut butter and honey. All right. Number one is by being receptive. For example, John gets up early most weekends to put up my pop-up for me. So I'll have shade between volleyball games. And then he goes back home. Uh, So he's not like staying to enjoy the beach or anything. He just, he could be sleeping in, uh, but he just goes because he knows that I like having a pop-up when I'm at the beach and he likes getting all those husband points. I give him lots of husband points for that. And when I thank him, he just beams because he knows he is my hero. So I love that. And he loves it just as much. And I receive that graciously and we both feel really good. And I had the key in this exchange and so many similar interactions because I'm the one who does the receiving, right? And he's the one that wants to be the hero. So imagine 
if I didn't receive this, right? If I said, hey, I'm a strong, independent woman, and therefore I'll put up the pop of myself while you stay here and sleep. Or even if I said, you know, I don't need a pop up. Uh, don't worry about it. I've got sunscreen and a visor. I'm cool, right? First of all, he would not get to feel like my hero. Uh, he would just be the guy who sleeps in while I struggle to put up the pop up myself. And that is not, you know, or I, I just suck it up and don't have any shade between games, right? That is not nearly as exciting or fun for him. And it's certainly not as nice for this pigment challenged person to be in the sun between games. Uh, even worse, I would miss the part where I kind of feel like a Disney princess, you know, lose, lose, right? If I don't receive. So I have to be willing to receive for this virtual cycle to begin and continue. And in the battle days, I thought it was so great to always be independent and strong. And now I really like just being inter interdependent and having the sparks fly between us when I'm receptive to his strength and his offerings. It's pretty sexy. So this is one way to fall in love again is by being receptive, but it can be harder than it sounds to be receptive because you also have to be willing to do this second thing I'm going to talk about, which is to be vulnerable. Oh, I know. That's what number two is, is to be vulnerable. I know you were hoping that wasn't going to be involved. I sometimes hope that too, because it does feel awkward sometimes. And now it's pretty easy for John to put up the pop-up because he's taller than me, he's stronger than me. I put it up one time and I hate to admit this, but I struggled. I, I, it was kind of hard. So in this instance, there's a physical vulnerability that contributes to this, this dance we're doing where he's providing shade for me. And sometimes uh, I'll have some other kind of vulnerability, like uh, it'll be something emotional, right? Um, maybe I just don't feel up to being uh, an adult sometimes, or I'll have a, something in my blind spot or, um, you know, I have a challenge. I just don't know what to do about. Right. So, and these days I lean into that instead of trying to just suck it up and be strong when I'm not really feeling it. And it's always a little uncomfortable to be vulnerable, but this vulnerability where I need his help, that creates a fascination for both of us. That's what led to the lifelong commitment that we have now, mutual fascination. In other words, choosing vulnerability helps you fall back in love with your husband. So that leads to part three of how to fall back in love with your husband, which is to be your best self. Now, what does that even mean? Well, let's tick off a few ways you can tell if you're being your best self. One is you're wearing a smile instead of a frowny face. All right. You're, you're also finding ways to delight yourself with frivolous fun, of course, right? But also you're not trying to punish him or suffering from needless emotional turmoil. Um, you're, you're happy and, and that's attractive. And that makes you exude confidence, which is where flirting comes from flirting comes from confidence. Like an ad I once saw that said, you flirt not because he looks good, but because you do, right? Isn't that so true? When you're feeling good, your mojo precedes you. And this reminds everyone, including you, that you're an irresistible magnet and that it's your birthright to be adored and to feel desired and taken care of your birthright. And I'm not giving up until you get your birthright of a marriage that not only survives, it thrives because you realize that despite being defended sometimes or hopeless or afraid, like all of us are, you have fallen back in love with your husband. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. 
Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest, Julie, wanted her husband to change to make her happy, and he just wouldn't. Life was throwing them some pretty big curveballs, and their connection was very strained. But then Julie started experimenting with the six intimacy skills, and today her marriage is just what she wanted all along, peaceful, fun, and strong. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. Julie, welcome to the Empowered Wife podcast. It's so great to have you here. Oh, it's so great to be here. Laura, thank you so much for having me. Tell us what things were like in the bad old days of your marriage. Yeah, so my story um, is a long saga for sure. Uh, we'll just give you the highlights but um, and the lowlights. <laughs> but um yeah, my husband and I met over 20 years ago in a small Bible college in the Pacific Northwest, and um, we were just so bright-eyed and passionate about everything, and we thought we were going to take on the world and change on the change the world, and um, it, we got together pretty quickly. You know, we were married within a year, and, um, you know, he went out to, we moved to the middle of the United States, which I didn't even know it was in the middle of the United States, um, to take his first position as a pastor. And um, I thought, this is my dream. We're going to like really help people and we're going to follow God. And not like, I really was so excited and optimistic about our life. Um, and we started having kids pretty early on. And, um, you know, something happens when you have kids, like it really is a squeeze on life. It just stretches all of your limits. And, you know, I was pretty unskilled at that point. I thought I knew the right way to do really everything. I knew uh, how to make things better. And I just always wanted things to be better. So um, I really made sure my husband knew how to do it better. And um, he did a lot of throwing up his hands in those early days, like, okay, you change the diapers. Okay. You fold the towels. Okay. And pretty soon, like I was doing all the things at home and he was running off to save the world and really be like this heroic figure in his, our community. Um, and he was winning there, but he was failing at home, you know, cause I, he'd always come home and I'd just be like, I need more. I need more. Help me make me happy. Make, you know, like I I'm drowning here. Right. Um, yeah. So um, that was the beginning of part of the battle days. Uh, and it, so I was, I still was just, I think it just was how it was for most people. I thought, well, it's just me be how it is for most people, you know? And uh, I remember being completely and utterly blindsided when he uh, sat across from me on the bed and told me he'd had an affair. Um it was just, it was literally just the last thing that I had anticipated being able to happen to us because oh, I felt like he was, like I felt like, well, I don't even have to explain. You should think, you know, oh, this is not something pastors should do, but apparently this is not a small, um, uncommon thing. And yeah. I just didn't think it was going to happen to me. I just yeah. really didn't. Yeah. Right. So it feels like a layer of protection that he's a godly man. You share these same yeah. values. You met at a Bible college. Um, he would never, he would never. He would uh, never. And so for him to then uh, confess this to you. Um, and, and was that his initiative to just, he just decided he better. No, okay. no, it, he was caught, you know? And so okay. he, it was like, well, tell her someone else will, you know, which is, the story of most people who are stuck and trapped in something that they, you know, didn't intend to get into. And there they are. Right. right. So, um, yeah. but yeah, your it world was, is shattered at this point. It was, it was, and it was shattered in multiple ways. You know, some people who face an affair, um, you know, they can do it privately 
but yes. such a public role, you don't, you don't get that luxury of suffering privately. Um, it was very public. Our, our, our life was complete meltdown. And, um, and ironically, um, during his great fall, um, right there when it all came out, um, I had not, I had decided not to make any decisions right, right away. I had decided to, um, just listen to see what God wanted me to do, which is, Nobody understood at the time. No, no. This is, this, I mean, that sounds, um, yeah, you're an outlier, Julie. So h- h- where did you find that wisdom? Honestly, at the time, I don't know. I, Cause I think I would have been one of the same people who'd said like, oh, I know what you should do in that situation. I, I was, I thought I knew and everyone else thought they knew too. But there's some pains that like, you just don't know what you're going to do till you're in that moment. And um, Mm -hmm. for me, you know, I, I, I was destroyed. I was, I, I felt like I was living in a nightmare. I thought that I I just didn't know what was true. I didn't know. And he, I didn't know what was true at that time. And it was really a really dark time. Uh, We had to move in with his parents because, of course, he lost his job, his dignity. And that week that everything had come out, he had slipped and fallen on the stairs at our home. I promise I didn't push him. Um, (laughs) Who could blame you? (laughs) Right. Right? But I remember, like, I remember just like slow motion him falling on the floor, like he slipped on the, the last stair and, and he had to have spinal fusion that week, the week that everything came out. And um, so he was just late. He, he had both a f- literal fall and a figurative fall in every way. And he was just laid out. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't fix it. He was just completely broken. Yeah. And so we moved um, in with his parents on the East coast. Uh, I'd never lived on the East coast, but we went, we took our two small children with us and um, started the process of trying to heal from that. Um, At that time, at that time we had, you know, we found a new church. It was super supportive and, and actually had some good teaching about love and respect that was somewhat helpful at that time. Um, And we really did heal from that trauma. I felt like at the time, Um, but life has a way of like bringing new storms. (laughs) And um, I just remember that uh, when we moved, I, it was when I began to take on all of the burden of rebuilding our life because he was physically incapable for a long period of time. Um, I had to go get a full-time job. I worked night shift for almost a year. And I just remember it being just this blur of um, trying to sleep at the right times and be awake at the right times for my kids. And it was so exhausting. And I just was becoming more and more of the martyr in that. And of course I was unhappy because it was awful. It's awful. It was awful. awful. Yeah, it was exhausting. Um, but you know, Very we, little self care at that time. I'm no, no, I, I, and we muscled through. We muscled through <laughs> somehow, oh, okay. somehow, and oh, and we did have hard. some community. Commu- yeah, yeah, but I, I definitely at that time picked up all the things. You're like, oh, I've got to keep this family together. I've got to fix this. I've got to um, repair what's broken. I've got to be a good mom. You know, and that's where. You know, the superwoman started started to grow. Mm. the The weight started to get heavier, and um, and then even those things we kind of had good seasons of, where it felt pretty good. Um, there was still always like those moments where there was just this battle. If I, I remember telling him at different times, like, "I'm not your a- opponent. I don't know why you think I'm your opponent. Like, I'm on your side." But he felt like that was so insightful to me now that he felt like I was his opponent. Um, something about the way I was showing up was adversarial to him. Um, so he, uh, we went into another season where we really got squeezed, uh, when he lost his job and, uh, unexpectedly he'd been working for a nonprofit and really loved it, but it just transitioned into something else. And so he was unemployed for over a year and it was a good opportunity for superwoman Julie to get bigger and stronger and smarter. And I did, you know, and I did, we built a small business together. Um, but I was already working a full-time office job. So I was now I was working two jobs 
and being a mother. Yeah. And, yeah, and your yeah. kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, you know, killing it. And, you know, I yeah. really, <laughs> you know, I was like yeah. really proud of how yeah. strong, yeah. yeah, smart and capable I was. And um, at the same time, my resentment for him was growing as well. And um, yeah, this is interesting. I want to just pause here for a minute because yeah. this is, I really relate to this idea of like killing it. I remember feeling the same way. Like there's some satisfaction in that uh, martyrdom or like yeah. the sense of accomplishment. Like I am really getting all this stuff done here uh, yeah. and, and uh, doing, I'm doing well that like, that is a kind of a, I don't know, I guess I'll say a temptation or a satisfaction that you uh, probably kind of needed at that time too, mm-hmm. right? To yeah. yeah, is that sound fair? Yeah, I mean, and it was it was what kept me going. I think you know, it was it was what kept me going. That like, well, this is you know just what you have to do when you have to do it because he you know he had ongoing ongoing chronic back pain and he couldn't do certain kinds of jobs like bending, lifting, twisting. So I was right there to step in and be super helpful. And the more that I stepped in, the more that I had feedback, the more that I had a better idea, he went back to that posture of like throwing up his hands. Yeah. Which like, okay. is familiar. Yeah. It's familiar. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I get it. It's just very relatable. Like it's proof that you're so strong, right? Like this crisis happens and you step in. I mean, I just think it's, you're not the only one, right? And I'm not the only one that re- responded in this way to life's mm-hmm. curveballs. So, mm-hmm. okay. But, um, all right. So you're, so you're filling in again, you're superwoman again. And then what mm-hmm. happened? Yeah. So I just really remember um, a couple years into building this small business, which I actually really loved and was, like I said, killing it. Um, I started just feeling that familiar feeling of disconnection um, of that opponent feeling and that just sense that it's got to get better than this. I started having a lot of thoughts, like sometimes I just hate you, (laughs) which is just such the, it's it's, none of us want to admit that we think that sometimes, but I thought that at moments and it was over not even things that he'd terribly done. It was just him not being like doing what I say and being how I wanted him to be, which whatever that was, you know, making me happy. I just thought I'm not happy. It must be his fault. Right. (laughs) Ah, I love that you admit that because, yeah, I think we've all thought it, and especially when you're so miserable. Yeah. Uh, and he's right there. So, yeah. 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 And that's, that's how it was. And I think that, um, the p- like kind of the pivotal moment that felt like this, I don't know, I, I was stuck between this. Is this as good as it gets? And the frustration that everything I tried, you know, reading books or, um, you know, just all the, th- all the common knowledge and wisdom. I, oh, I did d- take him to marriage counseling. I think we need to go to marriage counseling. I did that. Definitely did that. Um, and it, it was fine. I mean, the lady was nice. There, the, it, it wasn't like awful, but it, it wasn't damage. So no, it, it, just, yeah. it just wasn't helpful. It wasn't helpful. Um, and it didn't move the needle at all. And, um, so we just stopped doing it. And, and I could see the defeat on my husband, like that nothing he did was going to matter. So he just stopped trying. And I remember we went um, on this uh, vacation. Uh, he took us on a beautiful vacation. He actually did tons of lovely things for our family, tons of lovely things, but I was like, those don't tunnel. count. Yeah. You're yeah, right. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, uh, so we took us on this vacation and I, uh, to Mexico with a family. And I just remember uh, he was super focused on winning as a dad because he couldn't win with me. So he was running around, like doing all these things, taking him to the beach. But I remember just feeling like invisible, like he just wasn't even trying to please me. I, I couldn't see that it was because I wasn't really very pleasable. So I just like ran around, like trying to chase behind the family. Like, I, and I remember one night I said, I asked him, you know, what well, through tears, you know, do you still love me? you know, and, um, and I just really felt that, like, he doesn't even love me anymore. I just, and, um, I remember he he was like, Julie, I'll try harder. Like, I'll try harder to show you love me, you know? (laughs) And, um, you know, and that was 
still I thought felt so helpless. So, um, yeah, so uh, we went home from that vacation and um, I remember it, it was within like maybe a week of returning from that vacation and that kind of low moment where I just felt so helpless. Um, I uh, hosted a women's small group at my house for church and there was a new lady who had come that I didn't know very well. And um, we stayed after and chatted for a while and uh, she, I we talked for a long time because I, we kind of connected and I said, Oh, you know, marriage is hard sometimes is what I said. And she goes, you know what? I used to think so too. <laughs> and she said, um, I read this book that really helped me to learn some skills and practices that have really changed my marriage. And then she said the line, she says, I don't know if you're in the place to hear it, <laughs> but what? it was helpful to me. <laughs> Yeah, which was like a challenge, right? Like, it oh. it's like so yeah. tempting. I'm like, well, what is it? <laughs> Let me right, it. right. And so, I mean, the superwoman yeah. that you are, right? Like, yeah. so I took that as a personal challenge, of course. Yeah. And she had been very um, appealing in her way of being that it, oh. it spoke to me that, you know, oh, well, I'll check it out. So, um, yeah. So I downloaded, um, I downloaded the book on Audible and I, listen to it on double speed in a day and a half. <laughs> oh. That's my way. <laughs> yeah. Right. Maybe. No time. No time. <laughs> let's let's yeah, right. get this done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um and it was this is the empowered wife? Um the I think the original one I listened to was uh First Kill All the Marriage Counselors. First, first all the marriage counselors. Yeah. Okay. Which is now uh, which at the, the, at the moment yeah. it appealed to me. I get it. Like I oh, get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the original I listened to, but, um, so I was like, so I listened and, um, you know, there were a number of parts I was like, well, I don't know about that, but there were a couple things I was like, well, you know, I, I could experiment. So, um, later that week I had an opportunity to experiment. Um, I, my husband had decided to remodel the laundry room and I had literally a hundred other projects that were more important (laughs) moneymaker projects for him to work on. And, um, you know, the laundry room was like behind a door. Like nobody sees that. <laughs> Who cares? Right? Who cares? Not that one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, I decided to experiment with um, relinquishing con- inappropriate control. And I just said, whatever you think about everything that he did with that project. Um, normally I would have inserted myself in just about every way probably taken over the project and finished on myself and then resented it. Um, <laughs> I love that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Really oh, too. But really yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah. So, and yeah. Um, so I didn't, I didn't, I just went about my business. I let him do it. There are a few moments where he asked for him to help with this or that. And I just offered it with no commentary, no direction or correction or criticism. And um, he at the end of the weekend, he said, Julie, you were so nice to me this weekend. Oh, <laughs> and, and I just, that was the moment I knew that there was something here and that I was missing it. I like, I had been missing, just missing it. It was just a huge blind spot to me that this is the way he'd been seeing me, that I was not nice. I was being something else to him. And, um, you just didn't know. You never yeah, knew. No, I, I couldn't see. I couldn't see. I was so overwhelmed, fixated on other things. Um, yeah, I just, and I wasn't taking good care of myself at all. I was, you know, just running around ragged. Um, so I was of course unhappy. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, so he finishes this laundry room and you, uh, without your comment, um, and then he says, you're so not, did you, and you probably were happy about this laundry room too. I bet you were, you know what? It was beautiful. The, and that was the other skill I brought to it, um, was expressing gratitude. Um, I, the only thing I contributed was gratitude. And, uh, wow. I just, I think before I had had this idea that like, well, why should I be like, say thank you for things that should just that be that was, that was quote, right 
Oh, status quo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right, right. Or yeah. Or just uh, he um, should be doing the he should be remodeling the laundry room. <laughs> cut it, right. Yeah. I, the project I, I wanted. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, yeah. He actually should have been doing 10 other projects, but whatever. I did that yeah, one. Fine. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah, throw him yeah. a parade, right? Yeah. 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 So I really did just express gratitude. And I remember it had this, well, he even ordered this like vinyl sticker to put on the back. It was this lovely light blue laundry room. And it says, laundry, the never ending story, which is just so, <laughs> you know, so fun and funny, which is who he is, which is who he is. And, um, and I just only expressed gratitude. And that was definitely the big shift um, in things for us was that the start of a big shift for us as I began to just experiment more and more. Yeah. Wow. And so you got to see your husband um, probably feeling proud that he pleased his wife. And then um, it's kind of a full circle to that moment on the vacation was like, do you still love me? And you could see it. Like that, he he did all this for you, kind yeah. of thing. Even even he'd though been trying all along, he'd been trying all along, yeah. And so his love was evident in that moment. You kind of, um, yeah. It's a that's a that's a beautiful story. I just love the transformation from really you you were you know, totally taking a different approach. You probably had to bite your tongue a bunch of times while he was doing oh, that one, yeah. right? Like like you had a lot of things you could have said, um, mm-hmm. but you but you managed to not say them. Uh, and it sounds like you felt better for it too. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. More dignified for sure. (laughs) More dignified, right? Yeah. And so, um, and then you felt more hopeful about the prospects for your marriage. It sounds like. Yep. Yep. So I, so I went on for probably the next six months. Um, I just had the book and me and my little friend that I just made, you know, and she, she wasn't a coach or anything. She was just a woman who had, um, read the book somewhere along the line and implemented some of the skills and seen some transformation for her. So, so we kind of were, you know, accountability buddies. And if, if I couldn't hold it in, I talked to her about it instead, you know, cause I knew she'd stand for me. And yeah. um, probably six months later, I had, uh, you know, a plateau like most people do. Um, and I, so th- at that point I was like, well, maybe I better like order the new book and listen to it on single speed or something. And <laughs> And yeah. So, um, so I went and reread the book again and I really started to have this sense that, um, this was for me, but this was also for so many of the women in my life that were suffering too. And, um, you know, I'd watched so many marriages go by the wayside in recent years that, and actually a lot of people had confided in me that had, had dealt with, um, infidelity in their marriages because who do you talk to about it except for the the people you know <laughs> who it was broadcast everywhere and probably 20 people had over the course of those years reached out to us in their lowest moments when they had um had you know dealt with infidelity and i remember feeling like i could give them empathy but i didn't have a whole lot more to give them and i really started to sense that I wanted to be able to give them more than just like, well, I mean, this is kind of what worked for me. Um, I don't know if it'll work for you. (laughs) And uh, that's when I started looking into the coach training program and uh, was able to, I, I, that, yeah, I, yeah, that was a whole, whole nother step for me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, So I guess like one of the good stories is, um, you know, how I went about it. I honestly, I didn't even know about all of the other programs you guys had. I didn't know about like the diamond pro. I didn't know about the group coaching. I didn't know any of that. Cause I was just like, Oh, let me get on the website and see about getting some more stuff. And I was like, Oh, I have coach training. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just go right to the top. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I, you know, did a discovery call for the coach training and, um, I just was so sure that this was my path. I was so sure. And I, mean, I looked at the price tag. <laughs> I was yeah. not as sure. It's a big um, investment. Because it's yeah. a big investment, which which told me too, this is not just like a little like weekend training. Like this is an actual, like, like going to college for a year kind yes. of. Yes. Um, yes. And, 
Yeah. So I remember my, who, the person who did my discovery call, um, you know, kind of ta- taught me how to express my desire about it to my husband in an aspiring way. Um, and I was like, well, I guess I can see what happens. Right. Right. So, okay. Might as well try. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he hadn't didn't even know I was doing this whole thing. He didn't know I'd been doing anything this whole time. He knew nothing about the book or the friend or the skills. <laughs> no. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. And so I, I What did like, he think? Wait, what did he think was going on? Like, because he could probably tell just a difference. I was being nice. You were being <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. I love it. All right. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I uh I was like, gosh, this is going to broadside him that I want to spend all this money on a training for a thing. Like, there's no way he's going to go for this. And um, so I expressed my desire, said, hey, I've been um, doing some training on this uh, marriage uh, resource that I really think is great. It's really helped me out this year to make some changes in um, the way I'm showing up our marriage. And I want to learn how to coach other women. Um, and I'd love to be able to do it. And, uh, actually I sent it in an email because <laughs> I sent it, I sent it in an email because I was too chicken, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I love it. I love and it, it. it was, and I, I know him, he needs time to like, think about something. He doesn't like to be broadsided with a yes or no question. Right. Especially wanted, so it wasn't, it wasn't just, it wasn't just that you were chicken. It was also that you were, you were, um, Wanting to give him, you were being respectful. Yeah. It sounds like I was trying yeah. to give him the room. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I didn't want to get defensive if he, cause nor, you know, his, his man way of things sometimes is, is like, is initially no. And then he'll think about it and then he'll be like, well, hmm, you know, and I don't like the initial no feeling. So <laughs> no, no, no one likes that. Yeah. <laughs> Loves, yeah, conflict, right? Uh, so anyway, so I sent them in the email. I said, I'd love to, you know, uh, hear what you think. And uh, so c- later that week, he said, hey, so well, let's talk about this training thing. And he asked how much it was. And I told him, he said, oh, <laughs> yeah. and he said, um, well, I don't know. I always think it's a good thing to get more education and I think it might be kind of weird if you were like, oh, and then I'm going to get another job and, you know, it's going to be this whole thing. But I think if you want to add to your education, um, I think we should do it. Just no questions. Were you didn't, blown he away? Didn't have, no, you just, he didn't have, he didn't have you any fall questions. out of your chair? <laughs> yeah, just about. You know, I was like, okay. And then it was back on me to decide, okay, is this really what I want to do? Yeah. And um and I did, I really did want to. And, um, and there were some areas I still wanted some breakthrough on. And there was a lot of the training program that is kind of, um, an opportunity to get super, super, super support to get those final, um, breakthroughs, which I felt like I was able to get clarity on too. Ah, yeah. So you enrolled yourself, uh, which must've been kind of scary to, to sign up for coach training. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember if it was at that point, <laughs> honestly, I didn't even know all I'm a little bit that way. Like, you know, super women type yeah. people. Sometimes we jump into stuff like, <laughs> you like I'll figure it out later. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I love it. Well, yeah. did you have what, what, what happened in coach training for you? Oh, it was so lovely. Honestly. And I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't even know about the group coaching program. I didn't know anything about any of that. So, you know, first thing before coach training started, they said, oh, well, here's access to the group training program. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can, yeah. Just, just, and I, I remember the first one that I got on, um, I thought, oh gosh, I hope I'm not the only one <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm the group training. I get it. And there's like 60 plus women oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, on these yeah, group yeah. training, you know, on these Some group of them have training. hundreds. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, okay. So I listen and, um, and you know, some lady brings a challenge and I'm like, Oh, how are they going to, Oh, that's a challenge, you know? And by the end, you know, this short call, they'd really given her hope and a next step. And I thought, wow, I like this, this is why I'm here. I want to be able to do that. And um, yeah, it was just a, a year of training that was so, such a great um, opportunity to stretch and grow, to, 
practice and practice and practice with my partner coaches and build such a safe um, environment to grow into a coach, which um, is also, that is scary. I will say that (laughs) it it is, it's vulnerable to, it's vulnerable to put myself out there um, and my story and um, not know, you know, how it's going to be received or if it's going to be understood, because I I know that not everybody has understood my choices um, at the lowest spots, you know, they think they know what they would do and not everybody will be able to accept uh, the help that I have to offer either, but I don't know. I've just really taken relinquishing control to the whole new level. Right. Um, I can't control that. I can just offer what I have, um, which is my story and um, my transformation and my way of being. And um, I think that's appealing to people. Oh, definitely. It's uh, yeah. Your vulnerability is so attractive. It's so appealing. I feel it right now. Like I feel the, your magnetism, like I feel connected to you mm-hmm. um, from your vulnerability. H- how did your marriage change in coach training? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, as I've been thinking about that question all week, because um, my husband did change, but only in the ways he was responding to me, I think, you know, the man was there and I just had to give him some room. (laughs) I just had to give him some room to be the man that I married to um, make amends for, you know, all the things that he, you know, his, his mere mortal decisions as well that he wanted to make amends for. He wanted to be the man that I was giving him the space to be, um, which is, he's, a brave, wise, loving man, um, who's a wonderful father. And now I really feel like we're on the same team, you know, we're on the same team. We're not fighting against each other in this invisible fictitious war. You know, we're, we're just, um, standing for each other's dreams and each other's, uh, projects. Cause he's doing all these things, traveling and doing all these heroic things. And, um, and I'm proud of them. And uh, I don't have to second guess them. I don't, you know, I don't have to make it better. He can, he can do it. Um, so yeah, I just really feel like we're on the same team. We're uh, connected and um, which is what I wanted this whole time, but I just had to like, stop trying to like do it manually. <laughs> yeah, Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's and um, you know, he's a, he's a funny, playful guy. I just needed to like step into it and, uh, and start taking care of myself. I self-care of course, for me was a big change to, I, I, this year has been um, an exploration of all the different kinds of self-care, um, really like asking like, what's still missing, what's still missing, what's still out of whack. Where do I need to say I can't more, where do I need to, um, let go of the guilt of certain things or um, express my desire in an inspiring way for something new. Um, I was a, well, one win story for the year. Um, I had been, you know, working full time and this other job, right. And I didn't want to work so much. Um, I wanted to have more flexibility in my schedule. And um, I had expressed that to my husband too. And he, he, you know, was looking for ways to make it happen. Um, And, experimenting with things to try to make it happen. But eventually I expressed to my manager, you know, like, Oh, you know, I'd love to have more flexibility in my schedule. And he's like, "Mm, well, let me look into that basically. And in the end, I was able to transition to a part-time remote um, situation. And I I know. And so now I just feel like I've um, I know how to take care of myself. I know what I want. I can take each day as it comes. My marriage is just, what marriage is supposed to be, you know, my soft place to land my, um, my place to get support and encouragement and affection and love. And I just, I really feel like I'm actually winning now. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Wow. That's okay. So if we, I mean, I just go back to that moment. It was a little moment, right. In the hotel room where you're like, do you even love me? And, um, it doesn't sound like that's your question anymore. That's no. not even your question. Like there's no, um, 
and and uh see so it sounds like he felt he felt he felt loved he felt loved and adored mm-hmm. yeah. i do yeah and you did that you did that i mean it's you did it single-handedly. I give you all the credit, right, Julie? This was, um, it wasn't going to just happen. You weren't just going to arrive there. You took some right. specific actions, um, things that took a lot of courage, uh, uh, you know, from, from even from the first experiment you did with the laundry room, right? It was, it was scary. And then uh, expressing your desire for coach training uh, uh, and then expressing your desire to your manager for um, more flexibility in your schedule. And then, and look what you've created. It's, you know, it's pretty amazing. I mean, so, so yeah, you can give us a little more of a, a glimpse of what your marriage is like now. Like, how would you yeah. just, I mean, you did a beautiful job describing it just yeah. now as your soft place to land, but, but yeah. tell us some more about well, that. Yeah. So, um, so I will say that life still has challenges, right? It like, does. <laughs> Always. Life still has challenges. And the biggest difference to me is that in the way we face those challenges, you know, as a, as a team, um, he's been, well, here, I'll tell you another story. (laughs) So uh, about, gosh, when, well, right when the war broke out in Ukraine, um, my husband really showed up as with his real hero gene. And uh, we, we attend a church that has a lot of Ukrainian members. And so they were very intimately connected to the, the struggle there. And, uh, um, they had had some people, um, that they were connected with in, in Ukraine, um, reach out for help. And, uh, my husband came to me and said, I think, I think I need to go. And this was just a couple weeks after the war had broken out. And, um, like last February or something. Yeah. 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 It was right after it had broken out. And I remember being filled with fear <laughs> and, yeah. And I said, whatever you think, Oh, like that's oh. all I said. And <laughs> I, I trusted him to be, to, to know if he, if it was what he needed to do. And, um, oh. and he did, he went, for, he went and he, um, he's been really connected with some initiatives over there with his strategic skills and things um, and really t- providing hope and help to people who are really struggling, um, in a lot of ways over there, but, um, I'm just so proud of him and I didn't have to control it. I didn't have to question him and it enabled him to just be more of the man that I know he is. And it, it empowered him too, honestly, in a way to do more in the world. And I didn't go, I didn't do that. I'm not going to do that, but for me to be um, behind him enabled him to do more, you know, and, um, and that's been kind of an ongoing saga, but just one sliver of our life, you know, of, of things that are hard and challenging. And, um, you know, I feel like we're honestly, I feel like we're kind of back to that bright eyed couple, you know, who wanted to change the world and wanted to make a difference and didn't want to just sit back, wanted to really be helpful and, um, provide hope to people who are suffering. Um, and it'll keep being that way, but we're in it together. So it just feels really good. Uh, Julia, yeah, it's that is super inspiring. It makes makes me cry. It makes me cry because I really hear that you are you're both living your purpose in the world. Yeah. You are contributing just the way you always imagined you would, yeah. uh, and weren't able to for a while. Um, yeah, but now you can. Um, it feels really good. It's uh, it's just a joy to to see it, to hear your story. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Great thank job. You for the opportunity Great job. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and how, how do you think this has affected your kids? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's another story. Um, yeah. So we went into, I think I told you, well, no, maybe I didn't say, but I remember thinking when all the COVID shutdowns happened, I was like, oh, well, I'll get to go home and be at home and then I can fix everything and it's going to make things better because I won't be at work all the time. Of course, it just got way worse because I was just there to micromanage and (laughs) be controlling all the time. Wherever you went, there you were, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah. So, um, so that was kind of a build up to the breakdown for sure was, um, which now I'm grateful for because, you know, you can't have a breakthrough if you can't have the breakdown, right? It was the breakdown before the breakthrough. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. But at that same time, um, you know, uh, I have two teenagers right now and, um, they dealt with all the shutdowns differently. One of them didn't like it, but she dealt with it. The other one really, really struggled. Um, and had a lot of, um, and I, I think a lot of women could probably relate to this, had a lot of uh, mental health struggles that um, manifested from that that whole experience for whatever all the reasons were and contributing factors. And we were, of course, in our most tense time, which I know magnified it. I know that even if we weren't like yelling and screaming in front of them, they know, they feel it. They feel the tension. They feel the disconnection. They're not stupid. Kids know. Uh, yeah. And, um, and I know it contributed to her anxiety, which has been something to come to terms with for me that I contributed something to her, her, um, struggle, which is, um, it's a tough thing, you know? Um, mm. beautiful accountability. Yeah. Heartbreaking, I hear it. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I remember as we went along through a long series of trying to be a good parent to a child struggling with mental um health issues and breakdowns and really scary stuff. Um I remember I got to the point where I didn't I had no idea what to do. I had no idea. I like I what I don't know, you know. And I remember um, as I was first with the skills um, that that I t- I just was vulnerable with him. I don't know. And at one point he said, I think we need to homeschool our daughter. And I said, he said, I I think you're right, but I know I can't. Okay. And he said, um, well, then I'll do it. And inside, I thought, that's never going to work. You guys are too much alike. You're going to argue the whole time. This is going to be awful. I thought all of those things. I had all of those fears, right? And instead of um, instead of just saying any of those things, I did not. I, duct- I just duct taped. I did not say any of those fears. And I just said, whatever you think. And I let him create a way to homeschool my daughter and manage all of it, all of it. And he has been the best stabilizing factor for my daughter to create this environment for her to be safe, to work through all of this, you know, turmoil within. And he has been so heroic in the way he's done it. And he, you know, I know he stuffs down all those frustrations that, you know, when you're dealing with kids and teenagers that you want to just be like, oh my gosh, just do what I say. Right. He, he has been able to show up so much differently because he didn't have another person attacking him in the process. I was supporting him in the process. And, um, and it, it was a totally different experience than I had imagined the worst case would be. And um, it's really made a huge difference for both of my children and where they are now. They're both, um, you know, of course, facing the challenges that all hum- human beings do, but I, I know, I really have a sense that they know that their parents love each other. They're on the same team. They're standing for their children and that they can come to us about anything and um, that we'll stand with them too. So it's, it's, it's a huge difference. And I'm glad I got to tell that story. Thank you for asking. Oh, I yeah. think a lot of women can probably, unfortunately, uh, really. Yeah. That's a that's a very inspiring story, also because I really hear um, the fear was right there. The you know the default, the old the old Julie <laughs> kind of. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You were so courageous. You chose to trust him, mm-hmm. even though, uh, yeah, that didn't seem reasonable at all. You chose your faith over your fear. It's just a perfect example yeah. of doing that. And now you're living the the dream. Right. Uh, and, and this is so healing for your mama heart, I'm sure, because you're seeing your, both of your daughters uh, thrive, it sounds like oh, yeah. from, whew, so that's, that's a very encouraging story. Also, um, what, what is your tip for somebody who 
it is where you were, mm. where um, it's just not feeling loved, feeling um, so miserable. He won't try. Um, it's, you know, you just kind of, you know, it's just life is just a, it's just, there's a drudgery. There was a drudgery, I think, to the marriage previously. And she wants what you have now where it, you know, it's a soft place to land and, and the marriage feels yeah. strong and they're living their purpose and their kids are thriving. Mm. Um, and yeah, and there's just connection. What's your, what's your tip for her? Yeah. Wow. That's such um, a good question. Um you know, aside from, of course, like, here, read this book. I, I don't know if you're ready for it, <clears throat> which I say a lot now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, but it's a good line. beyond that, because I could give the book to someone and if they can't be open and teachable to experiment, it's going to be lost on them. And I think it has been lost on some people. Um, and I know people are in different situations. You know, I, w- I had a deep conviction that I, I was, I needed to stay I, I needed to work through things. I, I had a deep conviction of that. And I think that women who are drawn to this work um, have some sort of that as well. And um, so being open and teachable, being willing to look at your blind spots and accept accountability, um, I think is just absolutely the essential tip. Um, being willing to see the ugliness um, or just the ignorance in your, in yourself and myself, um, I think is what makes transformation possible. And, and regardless of what the outcomes are, cause you know, life is complicated and storms happen and people have their own autonomy, regardless of that, um, to be committed to changing myself and being the person I really want to be and be standing in my purpose. Yeah. I have to say, Julie, you do make that seem kind of easy. And I, I just know it's not, <laughs> it's not easy to um, just take that arm of varnish look at your, yeah, the things, the ways you're showing up that are not ideal. Yeah. Um, I mean, how did, how did you get yourself to do that? Um, how did I get myself to do it? <laughs> uh, you know, I think there's something in most women that doesn't want to settle. I I didn't want to settle for mediocre. I didn't want to settle for this is as good as it gets. Um, And even all the other things I tried were attempts to fix it. Right. Because I I knew it could be better and I knew that um, it could change. And if I have that much effort for that, like, I have enough effort to work on myself and to be open. Um, And I think that's, yeah, I mean, of course, I, you know, I have to say that my faith has made it is of course played a big role in the darkest, darkest times. (laughs) And those times when you don't want to look at yourself, um, you know, the humility of just realizing that I am a mere mortal and I, I, I can't do it all on my own, but um, that humility, I think is key. I think the humility of it just to, be you know that I don't have to have it all, but I I, I can want it all. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. It's a, and that's yeah, it's part of you is wanting mm-hmm. to have it all, uh, and that's served you well in this journey. It sounds like yeah, yeah. What if you could go back and talk to Julie from before, and tell her what you know now? What do you think Ooh. you would say? Oof, yeah. What would I tell Julie before? Um, you don't have to do it all. <laughs> it's, it's not all on you. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to fix it all. Just take it one day at a time, one step at a time. Yeah, it's going to be okay. It's mm-hmm. going to get better. Mm-hmm. There's hope. <laughs> Give me some encouragement. Yeah. Because yeah, I think yeah. I, I like that. Because as you speak of um like the women who are attracted to this work, right? They there is tremendous commitment, right? Um you had tremendous commitment 
to your marriage uh, mm -hmm. through an affair and through this just this tedious yeah. time of general misery. Um, like none of that shook you out of your marriage, which is, mm -hmm. which is incredible. Um, uh, but some part of you had hope too. Yeah. You, you had some hope, and uh, even if it's just a, a little tiny bit of hope, right? Everybody needs that. Yeah. Um, and um, so it's just very gratifying to be here and hear, uh, you know, the incredible outcome that you created out of that just like little trace of hope where, you know, wherever it was and whatever it was. And, um, and I just, and I hear that's what you would have said to yourself. Like there's hope, there's hope. And here we are taking a victory lap. In fact, <laughs> I'd like to give you my wife award. Here it is. I'll take it. Best it. wife, best <laughs> wife. Uh, congratulations. It's, just, it's no small accomplishment. It's a huge accomplishment. You um, you saved your family. Maybe you were never going to be divorced, Julie. Kind of doesn't sound like you were ever going to be divorced. Just miserable, yeah. But just miserable, right? <laughs> right. But instead, we have a transformation of a whole family. You know, four people who are um, thriving and happy and living their purpose and doing well in the world. Um, and uh, you're just a beacon of of hope of what's possible. So mm. I, I feel very inspired getting to hear this whole story. I'm so grateful. Couldn't be more grateful uh, for your authenticity and sharing it with all of us. Mm. Thank you, Laura, for the opportunity. It means a lot. Beautiful job. Thank you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, we're talking about feeling rejected by your husband during pregnancy. And in the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that on Sunday, I wrote down my vision to have the Empowered Wife be the number one book on Amazon. And on Monday, I noticed that Amazon had slapped a bestseller label on the Empowered Wife, and it was the number one book in family and personal growth. So thanks to you for reading The Empowered Wife and rating it and reviewing it and for sharing it with your friends. My vision came true. I am so grateful.